Hey everybody, this is uh, Jeffrey Jansen. I am sorry I am late tonight doing Daily Reflections. Uh, I'm just trying to keep up with everybody and um, I had an important phone call tonight. And I'm going to wait for everybody to come on. Give me a few minutes for everybody to get on here. Um, state your name when you come on. Um, had a great night tonight with my daughter. Today was daddy daughter night. Now she's got school in the morning. Of course, I am reading this book to her right now. The Ghost Next Door. She picked it out. I think she picked it out because she thinks it's going to be scary. Um, I remember reading books like that when I was in school. So, anyway, very interesting. Devil Dog. I'm not going to mention any names, but Devil Dog. I hope all is good tonight. Um, so, if there's anybody, anybody wants me to think about tonight and everything else, let me know. And let's go ahead and get started. Uh, like I said, my name is Jeffrey Jansen. I Today is September 20th, 2016. I hope everybody had a great day today. I just want you to know I think you're all wonderful. Um, today, what was going on in the news? You know, I've been watching all this political stuff, and I've been watching all this negative stuff on the news and everything else, and I want to start out with this. Look. Guys, quit judging each other by who you're voting for, who you're not voting for, and quit posting political stuff because everything I read, um, every single party that posts something on there is completely wrong. And quite frankly, we don't want to see it. I know it sounds bad, but I understand people have who they're going to vote for, but when you're putting up falsehood, falsehoods, I'm talking, and like I said, this is going to the news media and everything else, it's just wrong on all sides. And so let's get away from this negative news crap. Tonight, let's think about something positive, okay? Here you go. You know what's positive? Our men and women in uniform. Why are men and women in uniform positive? Because they know how to party. They know how to shoot a rifle. They wear awesome green or desert camis. They work out every single day. Except for those guys in the Navy. Hey, all you Navy guys, you know, I understand that. No, I'm just kidding. Navy guys are awesome. Um... They're, they signed, they volunteered. Let's get this point. Let's get this out of the way because I have had several people, oh, they volunteer. We shouldn't be praising people to volunteer. That's right. They volunteer. To me, heroes are those that volunteer to do what others do not want to do. In this case, our religions, our freedoms, our free speech, our right to bear arms, our First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third Amendment, our freedom of religion, freedom of press, freedom to, uh, not pick it, what's it called? Uh, freedom to assemble. You know, is all because we have men and women on our front lines, morning, noon, and night, rain, sleet, snow, <laughs> Bridgeport, <laughs> cacks. Some people get that. You know, they're willing to do what it takes to make sure we always have those freedoms. And if you think that you've got freedom, remember this, freedom is paper thin, pa rice paper thin of all things, okay? So let's make sure to show them just a little bit of sex. We don't always have to... Go out of the way, but we got to let them know they matter, that they care. 22 of them a day are dying because they don't know they matter. They don't know they care. They can't get jobs. They're homeless. They're on the streets. You know, and it's the disappointment that we have some people that are so lazy. They go out there begging, but they're making $70,000 a year begging, yet the person right next to them who's a homeless vet can't make anything. So for all you people that take advantage of those in society, you're a losing piece of crap because we have men and women in uniform that deserve more how about our police officers who make little but go out there every day and have to make judgment calls you know when we say uniform we need to include our police officers and our firefighters we need to include our nurses and doctors who are in scrubs those are uniforms okay and to me they're all heroes why are they heroes because they are fantastic they're there when nobody else is they're there when everybody's sick they're there when nobody else wants to be around and i praise you guys i think you guys are awesome now you guys are not gods you guys are not awesome i love you man no you guys are heroes because you're doing what other people don't want to do or you're doing you know and you have to live with what you do whether it's good or bad but you choose the right or good and thank you for being a police officer thank you for being a firefighter thank you for being a nurse thank you for being a doctor thank you for being a marine thank you for being a soldier thank you for being a sailor thank you for being an airman really airman yeah even airman you know i just want to say thank you because you guys matter you're important you are awesome
I also want to thank all of our leaders out there that go out of their way. I'm not talking about the corrupt ones. I'm talking about the 99% that are awesome. That they have your best interest. They don't make a dime from you. They just want to do what's best. Thank you for being our leaders. And I'm not talking about politicians. I said leaders. Leaders are those that make the, the tough calls. Leaders are those who are the first on the battlefield, last off. Leaders are those who go charging into a burning building, pull people out, and carry them on their backsides out. You know, we don't always have to follow people. But for the ones that are worth a following, thank you for being our leaders. Thank you for being our priests. Thank you for being our mentors. Thank you for being our rabbis. Thank you for being our team leaders. Okay, We don't ever give enough thanks to those that have a lot of responsibility on their back. Because they're responsible for those that are learning. It's like our moms and dads are leaders because our children are following us. Our children are watching us every single day. Tonight I had my daughter. We read together. And for people like, oh, well, that's you and your daughter's time. Yeah, but I don't give you guys all you and my daughter's time. What I do is I give you a piece. So maybe giving you some ideas so I can show you different things that we do together. So instead of just walking the walk, you know, I'm going to basically show you what we do. You know, I would rather lead from the front to where I'm not afraid to show you what we do, what we're doing. Maybe it gives some people some ideas. I've got so many brand new parents out there. And for the last nine years, I've had some of the greatest friends of my life tell me what I should do as a dad. Now, some of the ideas I used, some of them I did it. But they told me, and they, and you know what, I listened. And man, we are having a blast. And I've also had people tell me some, you know... I love it because, you know, writing my daughter daughter letters when I didn't get her all the time, you know, um, making my daughter videos and stuff when she was little. Now I know that no matter whatever happens to me, my daughter will have something to remember me by. Or when I get older, what if we get Alzheimer's, man? All those people out there with Alzheimer's, these great human beings, but we have a d deadly disease out there that we can't do anything about and people are forgetting their own children. I'm hoping if I ever get Alzheimer's, that they'll replay all this stuff to me so I can remember again who I am. Okay, because to me, I never want to forget my daughter. I never want to forget my family. And it terrifies me every day. And, you know, Alzheimer's does that to people. You know, there's a lot of, and you know, that's what nurses take care of us for. That's the reason why I give a lot of credit to nurses. Because, there's, you know, they change the diapers. They draw the blood. They give the medicine. They are there when we're not for our loved ones they're there at the hospital when somebody gets in a wreck and we can't get there in time who is that person who's holding that person's hand is a nurse the nurses are outstanding people and that's why i always like to give credit to nurses and the nurse practitioners and doctors because we cannot always be around them um i know different people in my family when they were sick you know the nurses did an outstanding job i was just young at the time but you know looking back they never left my family sides they never left my friends sides and there's so many of my friends that have people going through terminal illnesses or illnesses and it's just nice to know that you got a nice person next to you a kind person they don't get paid very much but they're heroes and that's what matters you know they do it for other than they take care of themselves. We always have to remember how important nurses are. They're taking care of our family members. They're taking care of us when nobody else is. And I think they are awesome. And we always need to make sure we know they're heroes and that they are looked at as heroes. And the other ones are teachers. They're teaching our kids. They're there every day for us. You know, you know. And sometimes, you know what's good? You know what? I haven't said this one before in the past, but how about our waitresses in all these restaurants? Okay, some of these waitresses, they're tired on their feet every day and they got families to feed and they got to deal with key people every single day. But you want to know something? They bring us our food. They take care of us. They always give us a smile, even when they're sad inside. You know, these waitresses and these managers of these restaurants and stuff, you know, they're great people. They're heroes, too. And I'm bringing them up because I never bring them up very much because I think they're awesome. You know, they sometimes that's the only smile we get throughout the day because my biggest thing is I think all of us need to go out every day and smile and shake somebody's hand, ask them their name, say, how you doing, how you been? You don't need to be drunk or on drugs to be nice to somebody. So, <laughs> and I, yes, I will give definitely hairdressers a boost. Uh, one of my friends made sure to remind me and I saw her on, but yes, every time I've ever gone in and got my hair done, 
Usually it's by my daughter. The hairdresser has been extremely nice. But believe it or not, hairdressers are awesome. You know, these people that every day, that have everyday jobs that we take for granted, the hairdresser especially, guess what? We sit in a chair and they're taking care of our hair, but they're also talking with us. They're asking us how we're doing. And some, you know what? I know older ladies and I know some young ones especially my grandparents, they used to go there just for the conversation every week. They would go there whether they need their hair cut or not. You know, I mean, maybe that's why their hair turned blue sometimes when they got older is because they were underneath those hair dryers for so long, just having that conversation. But if you think about it, they got older, their families moved away, and no one's calling them anymore, so who'd they go to? I see people going over to different restaurants and stuff in Quincy, and they're older, but they go in there for the conversation. Um, people go into their hairdressers because they don't have anybody else. And those ladies, they get treated like royalty whenever they go in. Or when they go into a restaurant, they get treated like royalty by the waitress, staff, and everything else. When you go into the nurses, you know, you go into the hospital and stuff, you're treated like you're their number one patient. All right? When a police officer is trying to do an investigation and he's got five people yelling at him in a row and never sure what's doing everything else, he's just trying to do the right thing for the right reason, trying to get the story together. And I guarantee all you guys are out there, if something happened, you're going to change the story just a little bit. And that officer has to get through all of that. So that's what makes them great. That's what makes them heroes. And we forget that sometimes, just the kindest word, the kindest thought you can do for somebody. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take money to be nice. And why do I say this to everybody? Because we forget in society with all the negativity and all the politicians, all the he said, she said stuff. You know, somebody asked me about the um, sheriff's thing coming up. And quite honestly, I think they're both great guys. They have both been nice. Now, the thing about it is, I'm not going to tell anybody who I'm voting. I don't even tell them. But I'm going to tell you this. I think they're both great guys. And that's on our sheriff's rule. I don't know what's other politics. I just think they're both nice guys. You know, I think... I come from a town to where we like competition, but deep down, you know, we all get along. And I'm blessed to be from a town such as Quincy. If you don't know where Quincy, Illinois is on a map, and you always hear me mention Quincy, Illinois, Quincy, Illinois is the stomach that sticks out in the Mississippi River. We're the belly button. So, you know, there's nothing within, there's no other towns within 100 miles of us with the same amount of people. And so we're kind of on our own little oasis we're kind of in the center we're on our little island in between smaller towns and cities and stuff which make up and make us great because we learn from those towns and societies um every day you know you must devote a portion to your family you must devote something to your kids and i don't mean devotion as religion i mean of yourself give at least a few minutes of time to your wife or your girlfriend always give time at some point even if it's at night um, to tell them how much you care about them. I was reading somebody, I don't know how many of you guys watch NCIS, uh, but one of the actors that left NCIS, he's starting a new show, and I was reading about his family life. And he's, they were his entire family's in L.A., and he's got to go all the way to New York. I'm an NCIS fan, I can't help it. But I kind of thought this was pretty cool. You know, he makes sure to tuck his kids in every night, and he Skypes with them and Facebooks, or face chats with them and stuff. But it takes a toll on him, he said, because he's away from his family. But at least he does whatever he can each day to take time out for them. Yet I see people around me that wish they had more time for the kids, but they won't get their butts up out of the bar to go spend time with their kids. They will not give up their one night of bowling, or they will not give up their friends to go spend time with their kids, yet they go complain about that very thing they're giving up. And I think that they need to. Now, if I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. If I'm not, I'm not. It's not a big deal. But I see a lot of great parents out there, and they'd never get the recognition they need. I also see a lot of mothers that take on two roles, and they're tired. They're so tired, and they're beat up, but they always find time for the kids. I see dads out there that want to spend every minute they can with their kids. They're taking on two roles. I see dads out there that, you know, they wish they could see their kid, but the other one doesn't see that they love their kid. Instead, it just becomes a pawn in a game. We need to stop that. Okay, there's other ways of handling it than bringing your kids in the middle of it. So be nice and learn to get along with your significant other because, like I said, one day that child is both of yours. You know, I'm not, I'm guilty of it just like everybody else. When I was, you know, when my daughter was younger and stuff, her mother and I did not get along. But I learned it was about my daughter, not about her. 
and I had a lot of wise people tell me, look, you, you know, and after a while, you actually do become friends with the person, or at least you get along with them. And I have no ill will towards anybody on my, in fact, she's a friend of mine. But, you know, people, they assume the worst, or they think something else. But, you know, sometimes friends are just that. Sometimes people are just friends. Um, I do a lot of business with a lot of great people out there that work in a lot of different industries. And they are fabulous people. But you know what? They don't like the negativity, so they stay clear of it. And like I tell everybody else, if your friends aren't helping you reach your goals, and if all they are is negative, get new friends. If you're going to a church that's more important about politics and rubbing elbows, get a new church. If you see people going to church all the time that are there because, <laughs> I'm such and such, but they kick Jesus out of church, get a new church. Or tell your pastor, hey, I, you know, you've got to find what's going to be best for you. You must be positive. You must be caring. You know what? You may not like it sometimes to be nice to somebody, or you may not like it because it may take everything out of you just to be kind. But in the end, that's what's going to matter. That's the test we're all being tested for. That's what it all boils down to. If you want your life to be great, then go out of your way to make other people's lives great. You know? You don't always have to eat the last piece of chicken. You can always give it to somebody else. You don't always have to be the person talking. You can also be the person listening. You know, you don't always have to take the weight of the world on your shoulders. You can also be nice to people when, and they'll take some of the weight for you. But you got to be legit. You know, you can't sit there and ask for one thing and do another, you know. You know, you don't do a catch-22 with people. Dang if you do, dang if you don't. If you think the world's a bad, miserable place and everything else, then that's what it is. But if you think it's a great place and the only person that's going to be able to change it is you, that's great. Now, if you think that everybody needs to be the same, look the same, act the same, be a one-world government, be under one... No, that's not what makes us unique. That's not what makes us who we are. Who we are is our individualities. Who we are is more important. Now, we have to build ourselves from the inside to be great. That's important. We must build ourselves from the inside to be great. Like my sister used to always tell me, and by the way, I know she's not on these. One day she's going to see these and like, oh, he did listen to me. Shh, don't tell her I listened to her. And she always told me, Jeff, you want to help so many people, but sometimes you don't realize you're the one that's drowning. And she goes, how are you going to save anybody if you're drowning. And I used to tell her, I'll just throw the thing, I'll drown. She goes, but you can't, because you're underneath the water. How are you going, if you don't save yourself first, how on earth are you going to save anybody else? Then you start thinking about like airlines and stuff. You know, you have to put your breathing apparatus on first, and then your child. Because if you cannot function, you're no good to anybody. So sometimes, whether it's spiritually, religiously, whether it's energy, we have to build ourselves from the inside to become better human beings, become better people. We must forgive those that have wronged us, or we have wronged, or that we don't like because they never apologized. Well, sometimes you need to be the one to apologize, whether you want to or not, just so you can wipe your hands of it. I'm sorry, then let it go. Be the bigger person. I know as kids, or I know that we always teach our kids to be the bigger person, but sometimes we're the ones that need to be the bigger person. Sometimes we don't even see the, the fly on the wall. Sometimes we don't see how bad things are getting. You know, by not taking care of our military, by just assuming that somebody else is taking care of them, by not taking care of our homeless, we're just assuming somebody else is taking care of them, by not taking care of our men and women with PTSD or depression, or the everyday person that's struggling that we instead of helping them we just assume somebody else is helping them we cannot do that we have to get out of that mindset because if you're not helping then nobody is that's the mindset you got to get into i didn't say multitask i didn't say take the weight of the world i did say get out and do something though and do not count on somebody else to do it you either do it or nobody is okay nobody's going to put your pants on in the morning no one's going to basically you know sound your alarm unless you set it you know you must take control of your life take control 
of your surroundings. Be positive. You know, learn to read. Learn into write letters again. You know, learn to every day put positive comments on Facebook whether you like to or not. Yes, if you're a social media person, I'm not saying get off social media. I'm saying put positive Every time you want to send out a mean Facebook message or Google message or something else, put something positive instead. And completely do not put down what you were going to put down. Say, I love everybody. Or, I hope everybody's having a great day. Or, if you ever need a friend, call me. Or, you know, but mean it. You might not like to do it, but mean it. Instead of putting all your dirty laundry out there, quite frankly, I don't want to know your dirty laundry. Neither does anybody else. Now, back to the case at hand. Our men and women in military that from the past they're feeling helpless and vulnerable be the bigger person tell them thank you tell them hey I got your back you had my back for so long for all my devil dogs out there for all my army buddies and everything else look you've been guarding for long enough let me take some of your duty let me take some of your stress and your burden let me keep watch for a little bit. Let me let you know that you're important and I'm grateful for you. Let those police officers know, look, you got enough people yelling in your face. I'm just grateful you're here. And be the bigger person. Be a support structure. Don't be the person that's trying to tear down that what protects you. Because that's what we're doing today in society. And everybody thinks that race relations are worsening. I don't think so. I think in today's day and age, we are in a lot better than we were 20, 30, even 40 years ago. I think what's going on is people are getting scared that it's going to change, but it's not. We're going to get better as a society, but it's going to start with you and I. It's going to start with our children. Do not count on anybody else to teach your children. Do not count on anybody else to build you up. And once you can count on yourself, you'll be able to count on other people. I know so many people say, I don't trust nobody, really. You just trusted me with that. <laughs> so tonight, I'll keep it short. And during our prayers, you know, I'm going to pause for a couple seconds that you guys can pray for whoever you want to. I'm going to pray for my friends who have wives that are not doing so great. You know who you are. That I'm here for you. I'm going to pray for those that are getting ready to have beautiful newborn babies. I'm going to pray for those that have lost loved ones and they cannot find a way to be happy again because that loved one was their life. I'm going to pray that we learn to celebrate those that died's lives. I'm going to pray that our kids grow up in a better society. Now, I'm saying I a lot. I would rather say we. Or us because this is not about me this is about who we are together as a whole a church is a place for sinners to go to get healing our friends are the people we go to for our strengths our family is who we go to when the world has shut us out our religion is what we turn to when we lose hope. And then eventually you need to learn to use those aspects, even in your good times. Don't just pray when you're at your worst. Pray when you're at your best. Don't just call your friends because now all of a sudden you need money and, oh, you're at your worst. Why don't you call them when you don't need money and you just want to tell them hi? Be a trusting person again. It's going to take a lot, but you got it in you. If you're going to go work out, start out small and then work yourself up. Tonight when you get done with this, for all of you that have kids, go in your kid's bedroom, kiss them on the forehead, whisper in their sleeping ear and say, I love you. I'm proud of you. Every day you should be telling your kids you're proud of them. Every day you should be telling them that you love them. And every day, whether they did good or bad, you should be giving them a hug. And you need to let them know that you care. And you need to let your friends know you care. I do my best whenever I have time or at least sometime today 
to send out messages to my friends and family to let them know I care. You know, and each time I think of somebody new, I send them a message because I really do. I don't just send it because I want to. I They owe me nothing and I owe them nothing. I do it because they're important to me. I do it because I know that every day is not going to be a spectacular day. And every day somebody's going to go through some hard times and maybe that one kind word, you know, resonated with them to where it showed they got happy. And like I said, there's a lot of people out there with depression that they just want you to call them. They just want you to stop by. They just want you to pray for them. They just want you to know that you care or that you remembered them. I will remember you. Will you remember me? I will pray for you. Will you pray for me? Together, we can pray for each other. Together, we can always take on any battle. You know, it, you know we, we're going to fall. What's that old saying? Better uh, when everybody's together. Oh, united we stand, divided we fall. That's what I'm thinking of. So, tonight, let's go ahead and pray. And yes, we'll pray for the hairdressers and the waitresses and our outstanding police officers and fire department. We're going to pray for all those truck drivers on the road and how great they really are. We're going to pray for our friends because we love them, we care about them. We're going to pray for our family. We're going to pray for those that don't think they have anybody in life when actually they do. I've got several trucking driving buddies that are great friends of mine. I have hundreds of Marine Corps buddies that are my brothers forever. I got friends that I never thought I'd ever be friends with. And I got family that has never abandoned me. And I hope you have the same. So to all my truck driving friends out there, thank you. To my friends out there, thank you for being my friend. To my friends that are hurting tonight, please understand and find some joy in your life. For those of you that have been strong for so long and just want to give up, just go a little farther. Do a little bit more. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep going. Keep moving forward. You can do this. Just because it's dark right now, eventually you'll see it alight, but you got to keep moving in order to see it. It's there, I promise. And it will be there when you get there, I promise. Like they told us, like I learned the other time, you know, it's not when you first start the journey and you're excited. It's not when you end the journey because you cross the finish line. It's what happens in the middle when you no longer see the finish line. And your start is so far gone that all you have is this dark area. And you give up because you couldn't see. But what you don't understand, the middle is the most important part. That's the time you have to be the strongest. That's the time you have to give it your all. That's the time. If you're wrestling on a wrestling mat, you're in the last bout, you know, fireman's position, neutral, whatever. You have to keep going because even though you don't see the buzzer, you don't see the time clock, you don't see the light, it's going. It's there. You just have to go a little bit farther. No matter how painful it is, no matter how cold and dark it is, no matter how much sadness you have in you, no matter how much anger you have in you, keep going. Keep pushing forward. Find a reason. Find a reason why. To my homeless brothers and sisters out there, vets, don't give up. Hope is coming. The Marines are on their way. People are on their way to let you know you're important. Be those people. Be the Army we know we can be. Be the Marine Corps we know we can be. And go out there every day and say thank you. Go out there every day and be humble again. Go out there every day and let those that are moving our country forward know we appreciate you. We respect you. You are important. We love you no matter what. Be there for each other. So let's pray. Dear God in heaven, please watch over all of our men and women in military. Please watch over our heroes that are the policemen, the firemen, the nurses, the teachers. Please be with all those single moms and dads out there that they understand that hope is on the way. Please be with those that are ready to give up at this very moment and they see nowhere to turn that 
The light is ahead of them. God, please watch over my daughter and please watch over every one of my friends. Please watch over my beloved Marine Corps. God, please be with those that have terminal illnesses tonight or those that are so in despair they don't know where to turn. Please be a friend to those that are lonely, that they know that you're there so they don't have to be. Please give my friends strength to go out there and do what others refuse to do. And God, most of all, thank you for letting me get up this morning. Thank you for putting a roof over my head, clothes on my back. Thank you for my father. Thank you for my sister, my nephews, my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law's family. Thank you for every one of my family members. And God, please, I'm going to take five seconds for a few people out there that want to pray for who they need to pray for. God, thank you. There's only one path to heaven. I believe in God and I believe in Jesus. And I believe there is only one path to heaven. Please show the others what that path is. Please be with those that are angry, that are drunk, that are on drugs, that they can find something better. Thank you, God, for my life. Thank you for my biological mother to choose not to abort me, which a lot of people don't know I was adopted at birth. And I'm grateful every day, and I'm grateful for the family I have. But I'm even more grateful for the family someday I will have. My journey's just getting started. Amen. And my name's Jeffrey Jansen. And you haven't seen nothing yet. I'm just getting started. So go out there, everybody. Be motivated. Be dedicated. Know you're important. Know, you're matter. know you matter. And don't let anybody tell you differently. God bless each one of you. And if you ever need a friend, I'm here. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for your time every night. Talk with you all later. God bless.